So what are you so upset about? I'm not, I'm just drying my face. Why? What? Well, you know why, and if everyone keeps watching, like quite a few of our followers do, they'll um, see in this video. I suppose you're doing an intro, yeah? Yeah. Um, it's been quite a varied uh, update this time. We've uh, got a Cobra, a Defender 90, uh, SD1 update, the MGB GT is coming along really, really nicely. Big section of update in that. And we're introducing uh, Morgan to you, which you have seen before. Um, I think that's a bit oh, it. Oh, and uh, we'll go around the engine building bay as well, I reckon. All right. All right. See you after the uh, splash screen then. test drive. Uh, we've done our road set up and everything and uh, yeah, drives are really really nice and smooth. Uh, we've sorted the clutch, uh, actually turned out to be a faulty master cylinder which we've rebuilt uh, which gave the clutch a much better smoother operation and also the half moon plate on the gearbox is a homemade one which is thinner than an original. So we obviously had to shim the slave cylinder correctly for correct clutch operation. So the engine's a 3.5 with a Edelbrock 500 CFM carburetor, same as the Weber carb. It's now got the full RPI ignition kit on. It came in with the Weber carburetor on there. And we've changed the camshaft to Piper 270. And it's incredibly well mannered on the road now. It will pull gears, as we'll demonstrate later throughout the entire rev range. Um, it just does everything it should do, nice and smooth. Power where you want it, even though it's a 3.5. That's not bad. It still makes the right noises and goes where you want it to. test is that then? You know the test. First to fifth? Oh that test? Yeah. Bit of a different idea this time though. 3.5 carburetor engine, Piper 270 camshaft. Not as much torque as a 4.6. Um, it will do first gear through to fifth gear with no accelerator. But I'm going to use the accelerator in first gear and then just go straight to fifth. So we're doing 10 on the speedo at the moment in fifth gear. Prove it too. 15 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour, we're now out of the 30 mile an hour speed limit. That's fifth gear, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, and I'm going to start braking for the end of the road. I didn't phase it at all, did it? Not one little bit. Steve just pointed out, this is actually a really nicely built Cobra. Um, there's no real, real clunks or clanks that you get in some kit cars. It's well mannered on the road, the steering's nice and sharp. The suspension is, well you commented on it didn't you? Bloody comfortable. Yeah, it's really a real pleasure to drive. And definitely now it's got a proper performing engine. Okay, so um, yeah, in this workshop update as well, it's now time for the MG to receive its new engine and new gearbox. Um, you've seen us messing around underneath with a tape measure for a four-wheel drive gearbox. Obviously this isn't going four-wheel drive, although a four-wheel drive MG BGT is on my list of cars to build one day. Um, but no, this is getting, uh, Steve, if you swing around, a brand new Mazda 5-speed gearbox conversion. So really looking forward to driving this car with this in. 
It's actually a gearbox option that's available for MGB GTs, uh, Morgans as a straight conversion with the full kit and as a gearbox we can supply for obviously any two wheel drive kit car. Um, and yeah, really looking forward to driving this with its new power plant as well. The new engine is built up. We'll let you in on what it is later. Um, so, I think uh, it's just a case of um, another one of the up, over and in jobs. Let's see how Steve does. So uh, here's the kit that we've got to install. The uh, Helix clutch cover and friction disc. We've got the gear stick and knob, essential for moving faster than just first gear. And here's the uh, bit that we're all excited about, the Mazda 5 speed box. Uh, it comes complete with concentric slave cylinder in the hydraulic lines. The whole kit here is designed for the MGB GT. We are able to supply the gearboxes for other um, you know, applications as well. If you're building a kit car then obviously we can supply just this bit without the prop shafts, so you can have one made. We are going to do a feature video on gearboxes, we've got T5 as well here at the moment. Uh, so we're going to look at the two in comparison. Um, so we won't concentrate too much on this now, this is a feature video on the MG. At the back end, the rest of the kit, we've got a 90 degree adapter for the speedo cable so that it doesn't uh, gnarl up and kink the actual cable when it comes out of the gearbox. Half moon plate, a prop shaft with the slip joint on the end, and then the mounting brackets. So uh, thus far it looks like a complete kit. Let's see how the installation goes. Right, well, quite literally 10 minutes later and it's in. Um, so now Steve's going to go exhaust manifolds on, got the water pump, bottom pulley, uh, alternator setup. Obviously all the ancillaries for the engine really, now it now needs to be fully dressed with everything. And uh, the gearbox kit can go on, we'll show you some of that from underneath as well. It all being installed and then it'll be ready for road test. Steve uh, busy working away on the MG, we thought we'd uh, get out and do the uh, road test of the Defender 90, the long awaited road test. So, just to recap, it's 3 5, fully rebuilt, stage 1 head, 5 2 second camshaft, Weber carburetor, and RPI ignition kit. As expected, it's driving exactly how we uh, wanted to, with throttle response everywhere in the, uh, through the throttle pedal travel. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, abandon Handsome Steve somewhere on the road in a minute to get a couple of flybys of the exhaust system we've built. Once we stop following this polo. drive this, much like the Cobra that had the same engine in it, a 3.5 Weber carb, 270 camshaft, first through to fifth, and that's the only two gears you need. Let's see if I can get first gear rather than the reverse like a second ago that you didn't record. So that's first gear. Yep, and we are moving. We are moving. As you would so expect. We'll spin it up to about 15 mile an hour, and then we'll select fifth. So, um, do you think they'd have rebuilt the gearbox cheaper if we'd only asked the first and fifth? Yeah, I think we've done something wrong here. We pay for too many gears. Yeah. Now, I actually drove 25 miles in this last night as a, a road test, some bedding miles on the engine, as we always do. And I did all of those 25 miles as an experiment just using first and fifth which I was very impressed by, considering it's a 3.5 and the, um, the Cobra obviously did it due to the lack of weight this obviously weighing much more than a Cobra kit car is still capable of it, a slim fifth and down to 20 miles an hour around that corner, nice and safe Still don't know where we are though, do you? I have no idea where this road ends up at all
something else I realised the other day when driving this on road test miles. It's very green. Well, there is that. But also, it does not have heated seats like my uh, Range Rover. No? No. First thing in the morning, Still proving the first to fifth thing there. Um, first thing in the morning, my behind is rather cold in this car. See, I never like heated seats. This time of year, they are definitely a requirement in a Range Rover. So are you still in fifth? Yep. I tell you, we don't need second, third, fourth. Waste of time. Right, well, uh, now we know where we are again, we'll head back towards the workshop and uh, see how Steve's getting on with the MG, I think. Sounds good. We'd probably, all best, we'd probably best test these other gears as well. No, uh, you don't need them. Just pop it down to the third just to test. I've changed my mind, you do need it. it sounds better. Right, so back at the workshop now. Looks like Steve's been cracking on with the MG. Um, everything's on the engine now. Ignition system looks to be wired up. Exhaust system is on. All the front ends in. The radiator. Uh, judging by the uh, splash of, uh, well, the puddle of water on the floor, I'd say it's uh, filled up the fluid as well. Water, so, um, water. That's, that's not a puddle of water. This is a puddle of water. Look. Yeah. I'm glad you used warm water. Welcome. Um, yeah, so. Uh, you did get some in the rad as well, yeah? yeah just a little bit, yeah. Okay. And then um, The reason the original rad's back in, we had an alley rad uh, planned for this, the customer had sent up to us. Um, you didn't, um, no, it's just plain water in it. I'd have liked some apple juice or something in that, would be good. Maybe next time. Yeah. Uh, so the alley radiator that the customer had sent up for this uh, actually had an issue with failing on the anti-roll bar link. So um, we now have a frontline alley rad on order, but it's going to be a couple of weeks. Uh, so just so we can get the engine running and do a couple of road tests, etc., the original rad has gone back in for now. Uh, update on the SD1 here, we've had a couple of issues, well one issue with the brakes actually, so the master cylinder's off on that, we've now got a new master cylinder on order. Um, purely just, obviously everything's fine with the brakes, it's passed its MOT, the brake pedal is, feels really fine. If you hold your foot on the pedal for long enough, it does just start to, the pedal creeps away from you, the brakes are still applied, but um, I think there's a little bit of leakage going past on the seals on the master cylinder. And then next week we'll be working on this Morgan out here. So um, you've seen this featured on our Facebook page before. It's an RPI 4.6 uh, stage 4 Merlin engine with a carbon fibre triple throttle body and is uh, actually now going up for sale. It's coming for us just for a service and an RPI setup and check over before it goes up for sale. If anybody's interested in buying this, it will be for sale and available through Richard Thorne Classic Cars. So get in contact with them or email us and we can put you in contact with them. Uh, I think we should go back in the workshop now after I've grabbed a towel and look at the underside of the MG. Okay, so um, Steve's now mopped up the two puddles that were on the floor. Um, and we're up under the MG. So the gearbox is now in. Uh, Steve spliced in a section of video showing the conversion kit, which you've now already seen. Uh, that's actually a part of the main feature video of this car that we're compiling as the whole build goes, which will show this project from beginning to end in one video. Uh, so the prop shaft's in that comes in the kit. The exhaust is now all now bolted up. Um, Steve's just got the speedo cable to uh, connect up, it's still loose this end because uh, his hands can't get behind the speedo to get it in so he's asked my little uh, supposedly girly hands to, to put that in, um, however I might think twice about that now. Um, so then we'll be ready for road test once the engine's set up. I think that pretty much concludes this week, um, no we need to go and visit the engine building bay. Okay, well this is the main engine to show you in the engine building bay on this update. This is the 4.6 stage 3 that's being built up for a Hilux uh, vehicle, Toyota Hilux. 
So we've still got the wiring loom just to go over, check the connections on, etc., which shouldn't take too long. Um, obviously, Holly's uh, been uh, very detailed on this engine in, in its looks. He's now uh, sorting the plenum chamber out. Um, we love the way the rocker covers look with the uh, sanded down ribbing on them. A lot of the ancillary's covers have been uh, actually vapor blasted on this engine to get back to a good finish. And we've got a ported intake manifold and trumpet base to supply a bit more airflow to the stationary cylinder head. So in comparison, this is a standard trumpet base. Very tall, narrow uh, trumpets on there. Uh, from memory, they measure about 36 mil diameter, whereas the ported version here uh, measures 45 millimeters, and that then is obviously translated through into the inlet manifold as well and ported all the way through. That's gonna give us better airflow at the top end of the rev range uh, for a few more horsepowers uh, without loss of torque down the bottom end. Obviously, it's not on stage four Merlin cylinder heads, so on the stage three RPI cylinder heads, but uh, we'll certainly do what it's asked.